this Easter message given by Pastor Stephen Yun at the Asuka Center United Methodist Church, April 21st, 2019. The message is the greatest comeback based on John 20 verses 1 through 18. The gospel reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, the empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and said to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them the things that he had said to her. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. It's good to be with you here this morning. Would you join me as I pray? On this Easter morning, we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome your resurrection. We welcome the hope, the peace, and the joy your resurrection brings to our life, our family, and our world. Send us your Holy Spirit as we listen to the words of Scripture and teach us your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what do you think is the greatest comeback in sports history? Yeah? Think for a moment. Of course, it all depends on which sport you like. Those of you who love golf might think of Tiger Woods who recently won in Masters after all the setback over the 10 years. If you love watching NBA, one of the greatest comebacks happened in 1998 in a game of Utah Jazz and Denver Nuggets. How many of you remember the game? Nobody? Yeah. Oh, it's one, yes. Glad you remember it. From six, 36 points down, the Utah Jazz claimed a shocking win over the Denver Nuggets. Those of you who are a big fan of NFL, you may think of Super Bowl 2017. New England Patriots versus Atlanta Falcons. 
How many of you remember that game? A lot of you. Well, let me skip that one because I was <laughs> very upset <laughs> watching the game. There was an interesting football game in 1993 that many sports journalists would pick as the greatest comeback in NFL history. Let me show you the photo. It's the AFC wild card game between Buffalo Bills and the Houston Oilers. How many of you remember this game? A lot, yeah. Great. Early in the third quarter, the score was this. 35-3. The Oilers had a seemingly overwhelming lead, and it was the third quarter already. To win the game... The Bills would need at least five touchdowns without losing any additional points. To make it worse, some of the best players in the Bills, including their main quarterback, Jim Kelly, were not able to play at the time. The hometown Bills were behind 35-3. to It looked as if all hope was lost. Plus, it was cold, windy, day in suburban Buffalo. The weather wasn't inviting. And the outcome was seemingly no longer in question. So many fans simply went home early. They left the stadium. But what happened after they had left amazed people in the stadium? The Bills overcame 32 deficit points to defeat the Oilers in overtime. And the final score was 38 to 41. Isn't that amazing? The win was especially shocking and exciting considering it was their backup quarterback, Frank Ray, who ultimately led the team victory. Perhaps no one expected that he would do such a great performance in the game. Certainly, there have been many great comebacks throughout the history, and sports is not the only area where we see comebacks. Today, we are gathered here to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the greatest comeback of all time in human history. Jesus was crucified on the cross on a Friday. He was dead and buried. To many people's eyes, it looked as if it was the end of the story. Even to his disciples' eyes, it looked as if it were all over. But on Easter, Jesus has come back to our life. He has risen from the grave. It was the biggest comeback in which he defied death, drove out the darkness, and turned tragedy into triumph. In today's gospel reading, we see a woman named Mary Magdalene coming to the tomb while it was still dark. She wasn't just a fan of Jesus. She wasn't in the circle of Jesus' 12 disciples for sure, but she was definitely one of the most faithful disciples of Jesus. Even though his disciples ran away, he followed Jesus throughout his journey to the cross, according to the tradition. And now she follows his journey to the tomb. Perhaps she wanted to do a proper burial for the Lord with spices. It was still dark. She wasn't even sure whether she could actually enter the tomb. It was an uninviting circumstances. But she would still want to go see Jesus without knowing that Jesus has risen from the grave. The victory has come already, but to use Buffalo Bill's game as an analogy, she was still living in the second, third quarter. She hasn't experienced, tasted the victory of resurrection. We don't know what was on her mind on her way to the gravesite because the gospel doesn't tell us. In this story, John's gospel doesn't describe the psychology of biblical characters. It only describes their actions. 
What was Mary thinking on her journey to the tomb? To most people's eye, it was clear that he looked as if all hope was lost. But what about Mary? Was there a seed of hope in her heart? One of the skit dramas I saw a few years ago, I remember Mary asking this question, why? What now? Was it all a lie? Perhaps her mind might have been preoccupied by these questions and doubts. Or because of the traumatic nature of the event, the tragic death of Jesus might have left her feeling numb and disoriented. And this is how people feel when their loved ones die in a sudden tragic death. What's clear is, though, that she didn't really expect to see the comeback of Jesus. When she found that the stone had been rolled away, and so the empty tomb, did she sing hallelujah, praising God for the resurrection of Jesus? No. She immediately ran to Peter and the other disciples she said, they took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. When disciples went back home after checking out the tomb, Mary was still standing beside the tomb, weeping. As you see from the image of the empty tomb in the bulletin you received this morning, the empty tomb is considered a symbol of Jesus' resurrection. But as written in the verse 9 of, in, the, in the scripture reading, no one yet understood from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the grave and that tomb had to be emptied. On that first Easter morning, the, the empty tomb wasn't a symbol of the greatest comeback for Mary. Ironically, it wasn't yet a sign of Jesus' resurrection until she encountered the risen Christ standing beside her. As Christians, we may also be facing this irony of life and faith in our everyday circumstance. And here are some thoughts that might, might be hidden deep inside of our mind as we celebrate the Easter. All right, Jesus is risen. He has overcome the death and evil and achieved the victory over sin and death. So what does the theological truth have to do with my everyday struggles and challenges? If the cross and resurrection of Jesus is about breaking the power of sin and evil, how can we make sense of the fact that they still continue to plague us? Why would we feel that the world is turning into a more dangerous place to live with all the violence, terrorism, and war? Why are there constant challenges and struggles in our homes and community? Maybe for those who experience this as a contradiction between faith and experience, the comeback victory of Jesus might sound like a mere euphemism or empty words, or at least something that has nothing to do with our present life. A British Christian thinker, C.S. Lewis, explained the irony based on his experience of the Second World War. According to him, the victory won over sin and evil through the resurrection of Christ is like a liberation of an occupied country from the Nazi rule. There has been a battle, and somehow Jesus has turned the, the tide of war. As a result, its backbone has been broken. In the course of time, the Nazis will be driven out of every corner of Europe, but they are still present in, in the occupied country. Although all in the camp still remain prisoners, they knew that their enemy has been defeated. So now it would only be a matter of time before they were released. I think we find the same lesson through the game between Bills, the Bills and the Oilers. For those of you who haven't watched the game yet, I invite you to go home and watch the game on YouTube. Watch it from the end of second quarter. 
Now you know the, the outcome already, right? The Buffalo Bills won the game, but you still don't know how the game would proceed each moment. There would, be, there would be moments when Bills would do really well, but then in other times, you will see that they are being pushed back by the Oilers until the Buffalo broke the, the tie, which happened at the end of the fourth quarter. The Oilers would keep leading the game. It would look as if the Oilers would win, but we know that it wasn't the case. There was one thing Ray, he and his team didn't do until the end. Do you know what it is? To give up. They didn't give up. While, while they were doing the best each moment, they endured all those losing moments up to the end of the fourth quarter and turned those losing moments into hoping moments. They let go of the moments of failure with an increasing hope in final victory. Of course, it's just a game. It's just a game. It's, you know, our life is more complicated than a sports game. But I believe this game speaks to us very important truths about what we experience in our faith journey. Through his resurrection, Jesus brought victory over sin, evil, and death. But as Christians, we know that there are times when we feel like we are losing all the time, feel like we've lost failed already. Just as the fans of Buffalo Bills left the game early, thinking that the deficit would be insurmountable. Tragedies keep happening in our world. It seems that the bad things happen to good people again and again. Evil seems to win in the battle. Even though the final outcome has been determined by the victory of Jesus, in this world we may experience as if we were still living and a good Friday with fresh wounds and pain or in an uncertainty and ambiguity of our holy Saturday. To use the NFL game as an analogy again, we may feel like we're still in the middle of second, third quarter. Though we don't know exactly when, the end of fourth quarter will come, my friends. There will be a time when everything will come to a closer a time when we will fully taste and, and participate in the final victory of Jesus. To get there, our job for now is not to give up. Don't give up on your faith in God. Don't give up on God's call to you. Don't give up on what you believe as the truth in Jesus. Don't give up on this church family the body of Christ given to you as a gift. You can overcome any setback through the strength found in the risen Christ. You can make a comeback with the power of resurrection that is available through our Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned earlier that in the game between the Bills and Oilers, some of the fans left early. They went home. They gave up watching the game. It turned out the game was not televised locally because it didn't sell out. Some fans heard the news of the comeback on the radio. What's funny is that fans who left the game early were not allowed to re-enter the stadium. So many of them climbed over an imp imposing fans to share the joy of the victory. Still many fans of the Bills didn't realize until much later that the Bills came back to win. Friends, we're not just a fan of Jesus. We are the disciples. We are the players. As his, as his disciples, we are running the race for God's kingdom proclaimed by our right reason Christ. And at the end of this race, the ultimate comeback victory will come. So let us not give up. Our journey to the final victory entails the moments of victory, and the moments of setback. As we're getting there in, 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 through each moment, through each day, you're getting there not by yourself, but with our reason Christ who coaches you and guides you through the Holy Spirit. You are getting there along with your 
team, this wonderful church family. In my previous ministry, I've had a privilege to witness people who experience those little moments of comeback in their lives in the midst of ongoing challenges and setbacks. I know a youth boy who drifted, drifted away from God, his faith in God, while going through his parents' divorce. He was a trouble, troublemaker in school. One day he came to a youth prayer service. It was a few days, few days after his stepmother left him and his dad. In prayer, he fell for the first time in his life, the presence of Jesus with him. His situation has not changed at all, but he has come back. It was a comeback moment for him. I know one of my former parishioners who has struggled with addiction, but recovered from it. And I still remember the moment when I baptized him with his daughter. He has come back. As you would know, in our congregation, we have some church families who went through or are still going through cancer treatment. I remember one conversation I had with one of them. After persevering all the difficult procedures, she said to me, whether I live or die, I know the Lord is with me. I know the Lord is with me. If any of you here is feeling like you're losing, you're failing all the time. If you feel like your every day is a good Friday, remember, even the death cannot define your final destiny because in Jesus, death has been beaten. From the decisive setback of Jesus' death, Jesus came back to life, proved his victory over death. The greatest comeback in history has taken place. Amen.